<laughs> for this country where we did Nigeria, if we they talk giddy giddy, kata kata, go they fall. <laughs> Nigeria is the only country that banditry has not become a normal thing. Insecurity has become a normal routine in this country. If each time we keep complaining of insecurity, that insecurity is everywhere, this is happening. In a couple with insecurity, the government, they are doing their own. The governors, they are doing their own. The president is doing his own. The police, they are doing their own. They are military, they are doing their own. All this nonsense, all these people are doing. They are heaping all of them on the innocent citizens. Who doesn't know one or two in this country? And this is actually the reason why many Nigerians have seceded mentally out of this country, Nigeria. And this is the reason why somebody like me and my kind, we have put it upon ourselves to always come and report insecurity issues in this country. The mess that is going on in this country. Do you know why I'm saying this? Because there is a breaking now that bandit has reportedly, that bandit had reportedly kidnapped 100 citizens in a community in Zamfara states. Just imagine, in a community in Zamfara state, bandit has kidnapped 100 persons. And uh, one of these 100 persons, who say, and a man who was kidnapped before, but later released under ransom, and the man is managing to even recover from the leg injury which he got. Now he has been allegedly kidnapped again. Country. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let it not be that I'm trying to fill things up. I, I am talking nonsense. You understand me? I want you people to just listen to this article from Sahara Reporters. And I read, bandits reportedly attack Zamfara community, kidnap over 100 villagers. November 6, 2024, the news, it was gathered that among the kidnapped victims was the chief imam of the community who was reportedly recently freed following a previous kidnapping ordeal and was recovering from a leg injury. Armed bandits on rampage have reportedly attacked Wanke village near Gusau, Zamfara state capital and kidnapped over 100 villagers, including women, children and the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before I continue this article, <laughs> you see that this country, the politicians, they are not the only problem. We have group of people that he are heaping their problem upon the citizens of this country. It therefore now become a crime for anyone to be a Nigerian. It therefore now become an abomination for you to be a Nigerian because once you as a Nigerian, you must certainly suffer. If you don't suffer in the hands of the kidnappers, you suffer in the hands of bandits. If you don't suffer from their hands, you suffer from the hands of Boko Haram. If you don't suffer, you, fall, you suffer from the hands of policemen. People who are supposed to protect you as a citizen, you will suffer from their hands. If you don't suffer from those people, you suffer from the military. If you don't suffer from those people, you suffer from your governors, the councillors. If you don't suffer from those people, you suffer from people who feel they have money. So they can do anything they like and nothing will happen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look at children now. I believe among these children are minors as well, innocent children who don't know anything, but they want to so they go and suffer now for nothing. Anyway, I continue. It was gathered that among the kidnapped victims was the chief imam of the community who was reportedly recently freed among a previous kidnapping ordeal and was recovering from a leg injury. In an interview with the BBC Hausa service, a survivor who reportedly described the panic and chaos that gripped the affected community said, Many residents flew to Gusau, Gusau, the state capital, for fear of further attacks. The survivor was quoted as saying, In Sabon Lai, over 50 people were abducted, and in Dugun Hai, another 50 or more were taken. The survivor added that the exact number of captives remain unclear due to the confusion and mass escape of the villagers who fled for safety. The attackers chased us like prey. They pursued people on motorcycles, tracked down women in their homes and kidnapped them. Some were caught while trying to escape and were dragged into the bush. The survivor added, the bandits were said to have targeted several villages, including Jira, Ruwa, Kusa, Dugonhai, and Gidankado. They also stole motorcycles, 
farm produce and personal belongings such as smartphones and looted shops for food items. Local resistance Local resistance reportedly alerted officials in Wanke about the attacks, but no official response has been forthcoming. The survival expressed the despair of the community, which has endured this brutal assault for nearly nine years. There are no animals left here, he said, adding, when night falls, fear sets in and it has become too dangerous to stay in these communities overnight. As of the time of filling this report, there has been no official statement from state authorities or the police regarding the attack. Sahara reporters try to get the comments of the police command in the state, but effort made to reach the police public relations officers in the state, Yazid Abubakar failed as his mobile line could not be reached when it was called. Now, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, now you have all heard everything that I read in this article as published by Sahara reporters. You heard when they said that these kidnappers, bandits, they targeted so many cities and which many cities they, they attacked and they survived. They looted shops, they looted properties of people and so many of others. And all these things happened. It did not happen for just 10 minutes or 20 minutes. This must have happened for about one hour and above. Then where are the security personnel? Where are the security agencies that they could not even interfere? You see, this is why I keep telling us that Nigeria is a terrorist country. This country is a country that is led by the terrorists. So anything resemblance of terrorism, banditry, kidnapping and all of that, nobody should be surprised or if they are operating smoothly without interference of the security agents. Because when these people, they want to operate, Sometimes these security agents, they are aware that these people want to operate. Then they will just leave them to operate. And thereafter, after operating, then they will come and be pretending as if they came to interfere, you know, in the operation. So that is the country we are living in. Hmm? And this is why everybody in this country who is mentally okay, who is responsible, that understand what is going on in this country, has succeeded his or herself out of this country mentally. You understand? Like person like me, I don't consider myself in Nigeria anymore because... Uh, 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 ever since I was born, government, they don't know me. They don't even know if I exist. And same thing is applicable to every other person. We are just answering name as Nigerians. But are you really benefiting what you are supposed to benefit as a Nigerian? In many countries that is working, ladies and gentlemen, as a citizen, you have things that you benefit from your country. You understand me? Talk more of an oil producing country like Nigeria. Which means you we're supposed to benefit a lot. But instead, you and we are not benefiting anything. All we get every day is kidnapping, insecurity everywhere, no light, darkness, blackout everywhere, hunger, hardship. And when you come to protest, the government will tell you that you are trying to overthrow their government by protesting. And they will charge you of treasons and treasonable felonies. What a country. What a nonsense, non entica mekelekutus country. You understand me? And when somebody like me, I come out to tell you people what I know. You will be some people, some cowards who doesn't know anything, who don't even know that tomorrow may be the end of their life. They don't know because in this country, anything can be your six o'clock. You understand me? Nigeria is a country now. Every day you wake up, you every day you see yourself wake up, you need to thank your God. You need to celebrate it because anything can be your six o'clock in this country as nobody is safe anymore. As a result of bad governance. And when you come out to protest against these bad governance, to talk about it, they begin to charge you of treason. Look at those minors. If not for the interference of the whole citizens, do everybody in the country, both young, old, international body, human rights and all of that, if not for those interference, do you think they would have left those children? They wouldn't have given them bail, discharged and acquitted. They will look for a way to charge those children, to tell them, to make those children feel guilty. They will consider them guilty and then they will sentence them to death. Was it not? Didn't you people saw it when some of the legal representatives of the Nigerian government were saying that all those minors were not minor, that they are all adults. Most of them have children. You can, you can begin to imagine the irresponsible people we have in this country as government, as lawyers, as whatever. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have spoken as Onye Meze, as a, 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 a man of justice, an advocate for peace, for justice, for love and everything good. So thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. If you have watched this video to this very moment, I want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the notification button so that you can get updates of every of my uploads hmm? and continue to support what is right. Be a justice uh, promoter. Hmm? One love.